right. We are so glad that you are here with us this evening. Uh, we're live streaming, and so we know a lot of people can't be here or choose not to with COVID and all that's going on. Normally, we have a pretty big production here, but um, things are different this year. <laughs> I think things are different for everybody this year. So anyway, we have put together some things. Uh, some of our ladies and the kids and everybody's been working hard on this. And um, so we hope that you enjoy this. Uh, it's going to be a presentation of the gospel at Christmas. But also wanted just a couple of announcements. Want to remind you on your way out this evening at both doors, there's some goodie bags that we have for everybody. We want you to pick those up. Um, just a treat. We want to make sure that you get those. Uh, want to thank each and every one of you for that helped deliver food baskets today. Um, man, that was easy. We got those done fast. And so thank you all for all your work, for your giving. And we just pray that Lord use that to minister to some people and um, show them God's love through our actions. Um, when you walked in, hopefully everybody received a candle like this. If you did not, um, make sure you let us know. Raise your hands. Does anybody need parents? No, I'm leaving no. this up to you. No. Okay. I've already had kids ask me. No. It's totally up to the parents whether you want them to have no. candles or not. I am not going to be the answer, the one to give that answer. All right. So if you need more candles, they're at both doors. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, so hopefully all those things are taken care of because we will use those at the very end of the service. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started in. I'm going to ask our brother, Brother Scott, would you lead us in prayer, please? That you love the world so much that you gave your only son, that anyone who would believe in him not only would not perish, but would have everlasting life, and he came that we could have life abundant and full of joy and peace. And I thank you for this season. Thank you for everyone that has worked to uh, make this night possible here at the church. I pray that you bless them and bless us as we enjoy the message of Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, then, without any further things going on, I think we are ready to start. Down where he lay, 
the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are blowing the baby away. The little Lord Jesus no crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him there him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of Him, and the light shineth and the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for, for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He come unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death have come down to have the light. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God. Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to be established in that, establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the host will perform this. into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and when she saw him, she was troubled at this, his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered to deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy who give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trust? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? The blind. Dumb will speak. 
a baby boy is mood of all creation Mary did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations did you know that your baby boy was heaven's perfect lamb and the sleeping child your holding is the grave Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily but while he thought on these things Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took a, unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day 
in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us.
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding joy. And when, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with, his, with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto his gifts gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
First John chapter 4, verse 7 says this, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not know the the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. You know, those verses kind of summarize everything that we've looked at this evening. And man, I was glad to hear when we asked if we wanted to do something because with COVID and everything that's going on, man, our kids were excited to do something. They were excited to sing and to read scripture and just to be a part of a service like this. And so we want to give them the opportunity. And this is whole gospel presentation is something that is very special. Every one of these parts that we looked at tell a story. You know, we started off reading John chapter 1, talking about the Word was with God and the Word was God. You know, the Bible talks about Christ coming in the flesh. And Christmas is about Christ, isn't it? You know, we've got to remember that. Christ is central to everything that Christmas stands for. And we're going to light a candle representing all these different parts that we're looking at. So if we started off talking about Christ, and if it were not for the deity of Christ, in other words, Christ being God, then guess what? The Christmas story would just be a warm, fuzzy story, wouldn't it? This was essential to the gospel story because Christ had to be God to be the perfect sacrifice to take away the sins of the world. So that's why we talk about Christ coming, God coming in the flesh as Christ. And so uh, we shared that and talked about that. Next, we talked about the Messiah and his character. And we talked about the names of the Messiah. And it's so important because the whole Old Testament talks about the coming of the Messiah. And that's what the prophets wrote about. That's what the Jewish people hoped for. And so the next candle that we're going to light represents hope. Everything that they read and talked about and preached about in the Old Testament was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. You know, just as they looked forward to his first coming, we look forward to his second coming, don't we? Where he's going to set everything straight. And, but his first coming, he came to take away the sin problems of this world. And so the scriptures that we've read pointed toward that. But next, his plan was not only to come to this earth and to fulfill those prophecies and those prophecies, but he came to bring peace. And not only to bring peace among us, but he came to be our peace. In our world today, we have no other way of being right with God other than Christ made peace for us with God. You know, most of the religions of the world, other than Christianity, teach that we have to do something to earn our standing with God. Most other religions of the world are based upon works. And that's, that's the reason why. It, it fulfills a desire inside of us or a need that we have to earn what we have. But the Bible says that we cannot be good enough. And that's the whole reason that Jesus came to be peace and to make peace with God for us. So next, we talk about love because that's what love is, isn't it? It's because God loved us. And we just read that verse and saw some of the other verses that we even talked about in our message this morning. It's because God loved us so much. You know, we talked about this morning that, and we used John 3.16. I'm glad Brother Scott used that in his prayer this, this evening. John 3.16 is the message of Christmas. Because God did not want any of us to perish. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And that's why he came to rescue us. He came to save us. 
And so that is unconditional love. You know, I think of Christ coming to this earth and think of all that he left. Man, he had angels ministering to every need, everything he could ever want. He came to this earth as one of us, knowing that so many people would reject his love, but knowing that it was the only way that we could be right with God. And yet to know that people would reject him, that's love, isn't it? You know, I think when I look at the cross and think of all that he went through, he knew that was going to happen. He knew he was going to be tortured and mocked and ridiculed and tormented. But he willingly came and did that for each and every one of us. That's love. We could use some love in our world today, couldn't we? And to know that He loved us that much. That's the story of Christmas. And then that brings us to the next one. And that's why we can have joy. You know, we talk about this being a joyous time of year, a happy occasion. Well, the reason is because Christ is here, came to be among us. Christ came to give us hope. Christ came to make us at peace with God. Christ came because He loved us. And he, that is why we can have joy. Man, this should be a happy time of year for us as Christians, celebrating it. Now, I know we still have all the troubles of life. COVID still goes on. Tension and violence and death and all kinds of other things. But joy is something that is deeper than that. See, happiness is based upon circumstances. But Christ came to give us real joy. And we can have joy in our hearts no matter what's going on. Because we have hope. We look forward to hope. We have peace in the midst of storms. We have unconditional love and total acceptance. No matter what else the world brings at us. And therefore, we have true joy. Isn't that the whole meaning of Christmas? And in this the things that the whole world is looking for right now? Not just during Christmas season, but all year long. You know, and this talks about our impact. That's the impact that Christ has upon us as Christians, as believers, isn't it? And therefore, we can have peace with Him. We want to give a little bit of an invitation this, more, this evening. Just give you the chance. There may be someone here that's never experienced Christ's love and received His love. You know, the neat thing about Christmas, when you give gifts, you don't give gifts expecting someone to do something in return for you, do you? That would be earning. It wouldn't be a gift. That would nullify the whole point of what a gift is about. When God offered Jesus to come to this earth, and to be our sacrifice to pay the sin debt that we owe. Man, he made it as a gift. John 3.16 that says that whosoever believes in him. The passage we read here in 1 John, and we could go on to verse after verse after verse, simply talks about accepting and receiving God's gift. The angels even said, this is good news to everybody who receives it to those who receive it god is a perfect gentleman he never forces himself upon anyone he gives the invitation to all he says whosoever will receive this gift it's available to all all you have to do is receive it while every head bowed and every eye closed you may be saying pastor mike how do i receive that kind of gift what, what do I have to do? The Bible says, first of all, all we have to do is acknowledge that we need a Savior, that we are all bound to eternal punishment. Bible, John 3, 16 says, it is not his desire that any of us should perish. You know, he doesn't want any of us to perish. He made a way for us to not have to do that. And that was through the gift of his son. So we just need to acknowledge that we need him. Then B, we believe that Jesus came as God in the flesh to be the perfect sacrifice. And so when He died on that cross, 
He did what we could not do. And that was to bring us to peace and right standing with God. And all we have to do, do is to trust and believe in our heart. And the C stands for to confess. To confess. And it means simply to say it to God. You say, well, how did I do that? I like to do it in a little prayer that goes something like this. And you can put it in your own words or say it in your own heart, however you want. But it's something like this. Dear God, I know that I have sinned. And I am so sorry. I know that you love me so much that I, I cannot pay for my sins. And so because of that, you sent Jesus to come to this earth to pay my sin debt. The best way I know how, I repent of my sin and I receive the gift of love that you have given me through Jesus Christ. And I ask you to come into my heart. And you know what? If you prayed anything like that, whether you're here in attendance or you're watching this online, man, we want to rejoice with you. We want to give you materials and help you and pray with you and talk with you and help you to grow in that love. And so we hope that you would share that with us. But we're going to sing. A, um, we're just going to do a little video and this is going to be our invitation Oh, okay. So we're just going to sing. Um, I just want you to bow your heads. And um, if you have a need that you would like us to pray with you about, if there's um, a special need, maybe you want to receive Christ as your Savior this morning or this evening. We want to give you that opportunity and let you know that you can come and talk to us after the service. Um, we would like to help you to grow in that relationship again. So we're going to pray now. Father, we love you. And thank you so much for your unconditional love for us. And um, Father, we thank you that you loved us enough that we to do what we could not do, and that was to make ourselves right with you. Because we have sinned, we've rebelled against your holiness. And Lord, when I think of all that Jesus went through willingly on the cross, it makes me want to love Him. It makes me want to give my heart to Him. And Father, You tell us that we can't be good enough, but we just simply have to receive Your gift. And Father, I pray that if there's anyone here or watching that has not done that, I pray that, Father, You would work in their hearts to show them how much they need You and how much You love them. And Father, give them the desire to want to serve You and to love You. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.